point onwards, you have to notice two things. On the state side, the measures taken against uh, Turkey's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Turkey's Kurdish population have been entirely punitive. The state doubled down in terms of uh, personal freedoms, uh, linguistic, cultural norms. Uh, Kurdish was even forbidden as a language up until the early 90s. Even the press and, public, and popular psyche, the naming of Turkish uh, Kurdish citizens given Kurdish names was banned. Um, the second aspect that came out of the separatist PKK uh, narrative and the, and, and the continued terrorist um, uh, attacks that ensued against state targets in Turkey was the securitization of Turkey's Kurdish policy. For, you know, the average citizen in Turkey has been fed a steady diet uh, since the 1980s that the Kurdish issue equals a terrorist stroke security issue, right? Uh, and that, is a, that has not been the best you know, avenue with which to sort of approach the issue um, in terms of a, a resolution. A large amount of uh, resources, state resources, which Turkey ideally does not have uh, money-wise or investment-wise or education-wise, has been channeled into trying to overcome this in, in, in a very sort of zero-sum uh, manner. And by the late 1990s, Turk, the, the state of Turkey and the PKK realized a twin reality. The state on the one hand looked at this conflict, you know, the militarization of the, and securitization of the Kurdish issue, um, as a battle which could not be won. The more that the state channeled into military resources, state of emergency rule in the southeastern provinces, on top of Turkey's continued bid for European Union accession, and its vast violation of uh, human rights norms um, against its Kurdish, Kurdish uh, citizens, it basically resulted in a view, which was probably sensible at the time, that you cannot eliminate or overcome this issue by militarily combating it. And on the other side of the equation, the PKK, which was headed by Abdullah Hojavan at the time, and arguably still is, um, looked at this and said, to pursue a course of secession, territorial secession from the Republic of Turkey, is also not one that has a sense of reality. So you have this kind of standoff emerging in the late, in the late 1990s, particularly after the apprehension and capture of Abdullah Hojavan and in subsequent imprisonment, which said, well, if we cannot essentially sort of, you know, meet, you know, if the Turkish state can't defeat them militarily and if the PKK can't, cannot carve out ter territory from Turkey, what is the solution? And the solution is, well, we have to solve it within the parameters of the state and in the parameters of democratization and uh, constitutional rights. 